Hey there everyone, welcome back. So, this video will be an example of a, a, a collision problem, right? But we'll also tie in energy conservation, right? You may notice already that there's no numbers in here. Um, that's because we're only going to look at it from a qualitative or equation standpoint, right? Just just uh, conceptually what's going on, right? Eventually we'll, we'll solve for um, how far or the distance that the block slides before it comes to rest, okay? So we'll get an, an expression for that distance, but we're not using any numbers, okay? So the problem is we have a bullet, right? So you can denote that like a bullet shape or a point particle, it doesn't matter. And that's fired with some initial speed, v naught, um, and it's of mass m, by the way. It's fired into a block. Right? A block of mass, capital M. And this block rests on a horizontal surface. Something like that, right? Uh, there's some coefficient of friction on this surface, so we'll say it's mu k of whatever it is. And so the problem is this, this bullet is fired into the block, it lodges inside the block, sticks inside, and thus the bullet and the block acts as a system, and it slides along this surface through some distance d, and eventually comes to rest. Okay, so let's say we'll start there, and it ends right over there. So it slides some distance d. So it does come to a rest at the very end. And we want to find an expression for that distance d. All right. Um, just know ahead of time that this momentum is conserved, right? It's always conserved. But that overcomes the static frictional force, right? The maximum static frictional force um, when the bullet enters, it immediately overcomes that and thus it causes it to slide, okay? So we're ignoring that part of it, right, F from chapter six. All right, so it's a collision problem. So thus linear momentum, again, is always conserved. And since it sticks in the block, that means it's a perfectly inelastic collision, right? They're separate particles to begin with, but afterwards they're acting as one, okay? So we want to find the distance d eventually. That means when you see friction and distance and all that, a non-conservative work conservation should come to mind, right? Namely, work non -con That's a silly looking w. Let's try that again. Namely, work non-conservative right? The work done by friction, in other words, has to equal the change in energy. And not just kinetic energy, but a potential energy also, if that's applicable, right? Since this is a horizontal surface, it just so happens that this problem, there's no change in, in potential energy because delta H is zero, but it could apply, right? You could fire a bullet into a block of wood and it could be going up a ramp, Right, at some angle. So just keep this in mind in general. All right, so that's zero because, again, this is a horizontal surface. So let's see here. Let's see here. The work done by friction when the bullet is in the block and the block is moving, um, we want to, well, we want to find that distance. We What do we need? We have a force in here, we have the distance in here, in here we have mass and a speed, right? In fact, we have two speeds. So let's write this out a little bit. The work done by friction, um, when this block is sliding, friction should be pointing left, trying to prevent its motion. So that's force of friction, but it will be moving to the right. So the displacement is right. So the work, because they're in opposite directions, 
and their vectors, the work is negative. Okay, force of friction times D, and that equals the change in kinetic energy. So one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared. Okay. Well, question. What are these initial and final speeds of? Right? The final speeds here are when the block is moving over here. Well, it's only moving when the bullet enters it. Right? So that means that this is the final velocity. Well, that's zero. And the initial velocity is the velocity of the block and the bullet just after collision, right? And so we also need to change the masses, okay? Because that's not just the mass of the bullet here. So V final coming to rest, that means V final equals zero. So that goes away. And now let's rewrite this here. Let's actually there's the block and there's kind of the bullet inside the block. Right? So we have the total mass M plus capital M. And what are the forces on this system? Well, we have gravity down. And I'll treat this as the total mass times g. And then we have the normal force, right? Um, all right, and so the initial speed, again, is the speed right here, just after collision. So let's rewrite our equation now. We have negative, what's the force of friction? That's the coefficient times the normal force which is equal to m plus m times g and then times our distance, right? And that's equal to a negative one half. Now remember we need to change the mass to this total mass. And we wanna find that, uh-oh, we need to find the final speed. What's this final speed here? Well, we have to get that via the, uh, the collision, right? The conservation of linear momentum equations. Well, let's do that. So I'll do it off to the side here. Initially, we have the bullet mass times its speed. So I'll call that um, one, I guess initial, plus the block of capital M times its speed, I'll call that two initial, and then afterwards they have a combined mass, M plus M, and then they have a common final speed, right? Um, by, by the way, I'm using speeds in this case because it, that's the same as velocity, right? The bullet's going to the right, thus when it impacts the block, that will also move to the right and slide to the right, okay? There's nothing bouncing off here. So let's see, the block initially was at rest, so V2 initial is zero. And now we want this final speed after the perfectly in inelastic collision that will be plugged into our speed in our energy conservation equation, okay? So let's just solve for an expression for that. We have V final equals the mass of the bullet times its speed, which I actually called V naught in the problem, divided by M plus capital M. There you go. And now I'm going to take this expression and plug it in 
right there, which I don't have room for. Let's uh, rearrange here a little bit. So now we have m v naught over m plus m. There we go. Guess what? Our masses go away, but that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry, it's squared. That's right, we have to square that. We can cancel some things out, right? We have a term of m over m. That goes away, one of those go away. And so ultimately we're solving for d, right? The negatives can be canceled out too, that's nice. And so up top we have mass times v naught, that's squared. And on the bottom, we have all of this stuff, mu, k. We have actually two factors of total mass. So one that was left over and not canceled, mixed with this one. Um, and we can write it like this. Right? And so let me just check my notes and verify. One over two... Oh, wait a second. There we go. And I left, left off a two. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. All right. And this is our expression for the distance that the block would slide. Okay. Now, <laughs> let's take a look at, at some things to see if this equation that we found makes sense. If the mass of the bullet was greater right? Would it affect the, the distance? Um, yes, it would, right? It would make it a greater distance. And so we see that happening up here, right? Yes, it's down here, but this would overcome it more. If the initial speed was greater, it would increase the distance, and we see that. That's the case. Um, if the coefficient of friction was, was larger, right? Because mu k is on the bottom here, distance would 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 uh, decrease. That matches intuition. And if the block's mass were or was greater, if it was a more massive block, well, it would slide a shorter distance, right? And so we see that too. Capital M is on th the bottom. So this is how we can incorporate conservation of energy with a collision problem. Okay, um, again, what happened here was that the, the linear momentum of, of the bullet before the collision went into, was transferred into the block, right? It's stuck in there, and both the bullet and block moved as one a distance d and came to a rest, right? The energy, the kinetic energy of the system during collision was not conserved. However, that's completely separate from once it started sliding, energy was conserved, okay? Please make that distinction between the, the collision points, right? Before and after, energy is not conserved. However, once it's in the block, then it starts to slide and comes to a stop. During that time, we have this non-conservative energy conservation applies, okay? So with that, um, thanks for watching.